Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Byrne. It's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. And ah! I'm just checking in on you. Seeing how your week's going. I know your week's going great in Philly, right? Unless you're not a sports fan, then you're probably all upset that everybody's all excited, running around, tearing up the street signs, you know, eating horse shit. I felt bad for that Philly fan that had to eat horse shit. You know what I mean? It's just all the shit that their fans have gotten, you know, attention for. Like the bar has just been set so high that this poor bastard, there was, there, he, he was like out of ideas. You know, you know where it is as far as bad behavior, you know, where Philly fans are right now. It's kind of like, remember when they did the dunking contest every year in the all-star game. And at first it was amazing. You know, somebody just like takes off from the file line. It's like, holy shit. You know, the next thing you know, you got to have like some fucking quivering fucking woman standing there and you got to jump and your balls have to just scrape the top of her fucking head while you covered your eyes like D Brown, you know. That's kind of like where Eagles fans and Flyers fans, all Philly fans are as far as like, how the fuck are we going to get on ESPN this time? What are we going to do? Throw up on a kid? I already did that. What are we going to do? Punch an old lady in the cunt? Ah, we've been doing that since the 70s. What the fuck? Oh, my God, there's a pile of horse shit. Ah, turn on your fucking video camera. <laughs> That didn't even make sense. I'm not going to put that on Eagles fans. I'm not going to put that on Philly. I'm, I'm a, that is an individual act. That guy wanted to do that shit for the longest time. He just needed an excuse. You know what I mean? It's like all of us. Most of us have never eaten another human being, right? But put in the right situation, you'd fucking do it, right? What was that movie? Alive. The plane crashes in the Rocky Mountains. You know, they're right next to Aspen, but they're all rich. So they're not going to help out. They wouldn't give them a sandwich. And next thing you know, they're eating each other. Does this have to do with eating? Why the fuck did this have to do with eating horse shit? I was trying to think where they actually landed. Where was it? They didn't land. They crashed. I would actually be upset if I survived that. You know, like you're like, oh, fuck, I'm going to die. Right. And then you fucking survive me on top of that mountain, freezing your fucking ass off. Then you wish you did. Um, anyways, anyways, um, I actually was finally able to look at some of the highlights cause I really wanted to see Eagles fans celebrating. I just couldn't handle it cause they beat my team. And, um, I believe I said, you know, on the podcast and towards the end of December that if the Patriots get bounced out of the playoffs, I was going to root for the fucking Eagles. Just cause you know, they had one, one, like I said, I, I really don't have anything. I, I wanted to say, I forgot to say that on Conan. Because so many people fucking reached out, you know, Twitter and all of this crap because of my Philly rant, thinking I really didn't want the Eagles to ever win one and all of this. It's just, I got booed in Philly. I made fun of Philly. If I got booed in Texas, I would have made fun of pickup trucks and women who wear too much makeup. You know, and you dumb fucking boots, huh? Walking around. All right, if you got a flat screen TV, you're not a fucking cowboy. All right, you look like you're on your way to a gay bar. I would have said something like that in Texas. That's what I would have done. Oh, look who's here. The lovely Nia. The fuck are you eating? What are those things called? Panoramas? All right, take it down a bit. Take it down a bit. Hey, that's when you know your wife's here. Hey, what are you having a good time? Take it down a bit. I'm eating pomegranate seeds. I'm eating pomegranate seeds. I heard they're good for my ovaries and my lady parts. They do. I heard, I read that. They're supposed to shine up your vag lips over there. Oh, baby. What's wrong with you? You know what's weird? That's a weird segue. You know, a year ago or so when I didn't have a kid. Oh, we'll go back a year and a half when you didn't get yourself knocked up, right? Um, I would just be walking around the house and I would be singing whatever contemporary shit that, you know, you were listening to, you know? This is that white gold and Michelle Pfeiffer, that's some fun, right? I'll be singing that shit, right? Okay. Then now that we have a kid, mm -hmm. I'm down there brushing my teeth going, whoa, vampirina, I may be blue with pointy teeth. Whoa, vampirina, but I'm not so different underneath. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? What happened to me? Uh, pa, 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 puppy dog pals. Uh, arf, arf, arf. 
Earth. What's when they go on, when they go on the adventure? How does the song go? Going on a mission. Going, going on, on a mission. mission. That's it. Ba, 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 da, ba, ba. Going on a mission. Go. Going on a mission. It's true. It's um, all about ooh. What? Oh, I was, that's why I brought what you on. We have here, yeah. Those are MeUndies. Oh MeUndies sent matching, matching undies. underwears. I love it. These are so cute. What's what's on this? A taco oh, with taco? hot sauce. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> Do you need to be explained so that? Wearing these on Valentine's Day. Yeah. Are they making me fun of fun of me for being a redhead? Are they making me fun? Well, are they making me fun of me for being a redhead with the with the hot sauce. Did you see the text that I sent you that now they're going to have redhead emojis in June? Right. Uh, yeah, which I just think is going to lead to more redheaded hate. The thing about being a redhead is what you want to do is not stand next to another redhead. You want to sort of like fade into the background. But you know what? You don't really, you're not going to use those, but they also have um, bald, bald emojis. Do they have a bald with a red beard? I don't know if the baldy has facial hair. When am I ever going to fit in? My (laughs) whole life. When or when are you ever going to be represented? No, you realize how difficult it is to be a redheaded white male? It's so close to the brass ring, but those blue blooded ones, they won't let me in. Oh, Jesus. I am like the the runt of the litter, the one that the mother rejects. Yeah, you're the real underdog. Um, I hate when you do your, yeah, you're the real uh, underdog. Why don't you just do a giant fucking eye roll with that? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> a meme level. It looks beautiful outside. So why don't you put on your underwear, Nini? I want to see you wear, in those. I want to wear it on Valentine's Day. We have to both wear it on Valentine's Day. No, we don't. Why not? <laughs> That's why they get Because I'm an, ad- I'm an adult and I can make my own choices despite the fact that you know something that's killing oh, can me. You just have a little can you just wear your life? taco underwear? Can you just have a little fun and not be so uptight? Did you just say uptight like we're in a fucking black and white comedy movie here? He's white and she's black. She you teaches them to loosen up. Huh? You're really uptight. You're. Uh, I'm not uptight. I'm a yeah, fucking control freak. I don't like people telling that me means, what to do. That means you're uptight. If you're a control freak, that means you're uptight. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Are black people uptight because they're sick of white people fucking running shit? What does that have to do with anything? That control? Didn't Janet Jackson do a whole fucking album about that? <laughs> why am i here because i want you to see the match in underwear i thought you'd have fun with it Uh-oh. rather than put demands on isn't it enough that i have to pay for the whole evening we're celebrating our relationship where is your contribution oh, oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah but you're supposed to do that <laughs> You're supposed to do that. Valentine's Day blowy. Yeah, but you're supposed to want to do that. That sucks. That costs you no money. And you're burning calories. Ridiculous. Burning calories. What do you, what? That's what an aerobic you? exercise. <laughs> if done correctly. Oh, I guess. I'm- Whoa. Getting a blowy. Don't, we are wearing matching underwear. Don't, don't fuse those two worlds together. Huh? I will. And I just did. Hmm. It's because of that world that you now have a new world. Okay. There you go. Okay. <laughs> hey, by the way, our, our lovely little one, um, oh. she uh, she took her first steps oh this week. God. Oh, it was awesome. I want to start crying. Yeah, she did. It's funny. You're going to start crying. I wanted to film it and then fucking put Aerosmith's walk this way underneath it. <laughs> yeah, every time she falls that... Cat. And when you hit the snares, when she falls down on her ass. So cute. She was so proud of herself, too. I didn't realize babies get, like, proud of themselves. Yeah. Like, so when she happy. learns how to do stuff, she looks over and smiles like, huh? Yeah, look at me. You seeing this? You checking this out? So cute. Um. Anyways, well, let's get down to what everybody's talking about. The scandalous interview by uh, Quincy Jones, Nia. Oh, Jesus iconic, Christ. Iconic interview. I didn't like it. Mm, of course you didn't. <laughs> what do you like, Bill? What, what What is popular that you actually enjoy? What do you mean? There's a bunch of shit it's that like, I like. Oh, little chocolate cupcakes. I like it. Oh, look, a basket full of puppies. I hate it. Like, what? It's not, none of that's true. I like cupcakes. I actually know how to make them, and I've made you some. And I love dogs. You've never made me a cupcake. You fucking whore. Put that microphone Excuse down. That's exactly what I just said. Excuse me. There's no need for that. I drove all over the fucking L.A. basin trying to find you a fucking yellow 
cupcake with chocolate frosting and it didn't exist and i went out and i fucking made them for you you don't remember that you have never in your life made me cupcakes and this is in los angeles or in new york this is here like when the last within the last two years Give me that I microphone. Don't remember that. You're I don't, off the podcast. No way. You're off the podcast. I don't remember that. Unbelievable. You made it. You went out and bought me cupcakes like late at night when I'd have like cupcake cravings, but you've never made because that would mean you'd make like a dozen cupcakes because yeah. that's how many were in the pan. Yeah. And you frosted them and everything. Yeah. I don't remember this. Are yeah. you fucking with me right now? No. Go into the cupboard and go look. There's a fucking cupcake oh, tray. Yeah. Why would I have right. one of those? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's right. There it is, guys. And oh, what I've said for what? years. And you know what? There's you're only as good as the last act. <laughs> it doesn't mean shit to them. You know the, the Patriots um, are always just pushing fucking all pros the out the door? The liners are in there, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Wow. Well... <laughs> Guess who's not making cupcakes anymore? <laughs> or maybe I should film it. Will you make some for Valentine's Day? No. Wh- why? Because you're not going to remember, and then you can come on the podcast. <laughs> you never made red velvet ones. And meanwhile, I'm wearing matching underwear. I'm playing the game. <laughs> I'm playing the game, right? And then I make you cupcakes. You don't even remember? Hmm. How dare you? Hmm. You look gorgeous, though, by the way. Oh, Nini's been hitting the gym, and I've been noticing. <sighs> I'm trying to keep it together. Keep it together. Keep it together. Do you know what my issue is? That was all positive right there. I made you cupcakes. I Thank said you. you're looking good. All Thank of that. You. This is what I didn't like about Quincy Jones. He was talking oh, shit right. about We're people about who them. were dead. And then everybody took everything he said as fact. And it's like, you didn't notice halfway through he's going, I know who killed Kennedy. <laughs> oh, well, shit. You should have told Oliver Stone. He wouldn't have wasted all that time making that movie when he could have just called you up. Um. I just like when he said, when you go for the money, God walks out the room. That's what I like. As far as all that gossip about everybody else, it's like, dude, why don't you grow up? Huh? Well, who who goes around doing that? Oh, this guy used to steal songs. You didn't say that when you were making records with them, if you were still fucking alive. tell all the stories. This is what I'm telling you. It reminds me of so many people in my family, old people in my family. They just, they don't give a fuck. They're just telling stories about everybody. This person did this, and this person did this, and back in the day, it was that. Because what do they have to lose? They're not, you know, fearful of being politically correct. So let me get this straight. Polite. You're, you're not supposed to be. You're, you're supposed. Shit. You're not supposed to be a snitch. You're supposed to keep your mouth shut and all of that shit your whole fucking life. He's not in the. And mouth then in the yet. end, when everybody, do you know what the fuck I mean? Well, I don't know. How I was brought up was you didn't do that to people. Snitches get stitches. No, not that street shit, Nia. Like I said, I don't pop off, I flip out. But even in the hard streets of that the was, suburbs. That was a pretty classic line, huh? I think, for the podcast. When I lived in that cul-de-sac, you want to talk about dead-end streets, man. You had to go out to my <laughs> suburb. <laughs> that street ended and all it was was beautiful woods into a lovely pond. Remember uh, what lunch yesterday with mom? <clears throat> And she, like, did you hear her, like, kind of chastise me for not drinking water? No, I but I wish I could have enjoyed that. Did it bother you? Palmer. And I drank a whole bunch of water, like, the whole entire morning. And then they automatically, they automatically filled up my glass again for more all I didn't ask for it. They just automatically filled it up. And my mom was like, do you want some water? And I was like, no, it's okay. And she like hits me on the arm. She's like, you should be drinking water. And it's like, I drink water all goddamn day long. It was just a mother's love. I guess so. It just annoyed me. Anyway, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Hey, Nia, you should drink more water. (laughs) Ow! (laughs) I literally drink water all day long. Oh, nobody notices. I just don't understand (laughs) why in that moment she had to like, I don't know. It literally has been bothering me since yesterday. Oh, it has been? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, then I wouldn't have slapped you on the wrist there if I knew it was really bothering you. It's just annoying. Do you want to talk about it, Nia? No, I got it off my chest. Oh, there you go. See, that? that's what I've learned about women. You just, oh, I didn't know that. You just You've learned repeat nothing it. about women. Yes, you know, I have. You know nothing. You have no instincts. You have no intuition. You I nailed that whole thing about how you guys stop giving compliments when you get married. And you even said, fair enough. I don't remember that. Of course you don't. Just like the cupcakes. <laughs> You know what's fine? I'm going to stop doing shit for you and just say that I did it because you're not going to remember either way. 
and you're gonna be like, wow, I must, I can't believe I keep forgetting that I have the greatest husband ever. I keep forgetting. Forget. <laughs> like, he made me chocolate cupcakes. <laughs> I keep forget. What a f- I, can't, I can't believe that fucking sat there with that goddamn KitchenAid. I wore a goddamn apron for you. What do I get for that, huh? Nothing. Huh? I'm sorry, I can't remember. Aw, look at your little sunflower icon. Isn't that cute? I've never noticed that. I think that comes with it. <laughs> oh. So, what's up? I mean, what's up? Seriously, why am I here? Because I want you to see the underwear. And, oh, cute. And I want you to, uh, you know. Thank you, MeUndies. There you go, and that's that's the uh, that's that's the one advertiser we have today. Oh, great! Boop 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 bo, me undies, me undies, matching fucking underwears. Do 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 me undies, me undies. Put them on if you don't care. <laughs> You're fucking trapped in your relationship. Order the food. She don't give a shit. She's not gonna remember if you made her cupcakes. So just fucking tell her that you did. Cause you're a loser. All right, you want to look. You want to look good, Nia, with your significant others this Valentine's Day, right? Uh, then check out Miyundi's matching pairs. Oh, I should have been trashing these. Oh, Nia, I can't wait to, <laughs> to wear these matching underwear with you. A unique, fun gift for you and your Valentine. They're the perfect balance of comfortable fit and exciting prints. Uh, don't spend another Valentine's Day giving the. The same old gift. Check out MeUndies.com and find the best match for your match. Did you see how subtly they were saying that I was a redhead with the hot sauce representing the dick? No. You didn't? I thought you'd find that funny. Talk about why MeUndies matching pairs are the best Valentine's gift ever. Uh, Feel free to improvise. First of all, these are so cute. I can't even tell you. Put them on. They're very soft. Right now? Put them on right now. All right. I want to see what you look like. Okay. All right. MeUndies are the most comfortable... And fun undies that you're going to wear. Jesus. <laughs> uh, MeUndies are the most comfortable and fun underwear that you're ever going to wear. This podcast is getting sexy. <laughs> MeUndies are the most comfortable underwear that you're ever going to wear. <laughs> I'm not looking at the coffee. <laughs> God damn it. You fill out a fucking pair of undies. <laughs> Woo. These are so cute. Yes, they are. Really hey, Needy, go over there and uh, pick up something that I uh, forgot. William Burr. Um, all right. You know what? Just for that, I am going to wear the other pair. God damn it, Nia. All right. Me undies are the most comfortable. This is the last time. The most comfortable and fun undies you and your significant other will ever own. They're made from the softest materials on earth, wind, and fire. Oh, yeah. Did it feel good up, up against you? Who? We're talking... Three times softer than cotton soft. This Valentine's Day, get your partner a gift that's for the both of you. Order by February 5th at 10 a.m. for free standard shipping so your gift arrives in time. 100% satisfaction guarantee. MeUndies guarantees you and your significant other will love your matching pairs or your money back. That's the first time anybody's gotten naked on the podcast, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> right now, MeUndies has an exclusive Valentine's Day offer that just from my listeners for any first-time purchases when you purchase MeUndies matching pairs you get 20% off and free shipping MeUndies is so sure you'll love their underwear they off, offer they offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee if you don't love your first pair you'll get a full refund uh, what are you waiting for order by February 5th for free standard shipping to get 20% off your f- matching pairs free shipping 100% satisfaction guarantee well that part's over right go to uh, well at least the February 5th thing um, MeUndies.com slash bird. That's MeUndies.com slash bird. This will be the best Valentine's Day gift that you will ever give. Start matching your bottom half to your better half. Go to MeUndies.com slash bird right now. Um, Oh, that's cute. That's very clever who wrote that. It is. Your bottom half to your better half. There you go. our anniversary is coming up. Yeah, and we don't even officially know the date. (laughs) No, we don't. No, we don't. But, I mean, do we always say it's Valentine's Day? No, we don't. We never go out on Valentine's Day. No. We usually go out a couple of days after when the prices come back to some sort of sensible, you know, you can get a table. Right. Valentine's Day, you go to Wendy's that night. They're like, we're sorry. It's going to be like a 45-minute wait. <laughs> um, but we never came up with like, I guess we just now, our anniversary is our wedding date as opposed to like the first time we ever hung out, right? Yeah. Neither one of us are big on dates. No. But One was, of us is a little bigger on cupcakes than the other. <laughs> but it was February 14 years ago 
Wow. Yep. That's so crazy. 14 years. What have you learned? Still looking, you're still looking great, Nia. Thank I'll tell you that. And I already knew that until that little, little fucking <laughs> display you just put on. <laughs> I will make you cupcakes. All right. You look good, too. Um, all right. Let's stop this. This is annoying people. <laughs> all right. Thank you to the Conan O'Brien show for getting me on on Monday, even as much as it was painful for me to sit there. I think uh, Philly fans uh, deserve that, you know, after all the shit they've gotten because of that rant, which I said once again, was not part, wasn't personal. It wasn't personal. It that just, was so long ago, too. It was. That's a funny thing because now people are going, remember you said you never won one? Well, we fucking won one. Yeah, it only took half a century. Fuck are you bragging about? That's like the guy who fucking finishes the marathon in, in like nine hours. It's like, yeah, dude, I could have walked it in that that amount of time. Also, that audience deserved it. Who did? The audience in Philly, they deserve your wrath. Yeah, they did. They were assholes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? Most of them probably have kids now and they're raising little asshole kids. But you know something? Not all Philly fans are like that. I remember Kevin you- Shea's a nice guy. Oh, we love you Kevin know? Shea. You, I remember those you guys on Always Sunny. Yeah, they're nice guys. I they didn't see them doing. Yeah, they, were they weren't tipping Super over any cars and stuff. Oh my god! Um, I remember you called me after that whole thing in Philly happened, and you were like, "I have a massive headache." And I said, "What happened?" And you were like, I just got into a fight with like ten thousand people. <laughs> 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 you did. You called me right after it happened. I'll never forget it. And I was like, oh my God, whoa. And then it just blew up. And I feel like. That's I- right. You were at my apartment. I was, yeah. I rode home with Bobby Kelly. And he was yeah. going, dude, do you realize what happened tonight, dude? Yeah. And I was like, Bobby, I got a headache. Yeah. You tell those people to go <laughs> fuck themselves, dude. You know what Bobby Kelly had to follow that night? Bobby Kelly had to go on after the intermission where. They, somebody with an ear infection drained it. Somebody else drank it, and somebody who watched what? it puked. This is in Philly. Yeah. What is going on with the and that, that guy that ate horse shit? Like, what is going on? No, 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 no. Well, what is going on over there? Seriously. You know what happened to Philly was when they built ni- Interstate ninety five. They they got bypassed. Okay. So I just think that they're just stuck in time. That's Back in a time when people ate horse shit? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think there's something. There's either some sacred burial ground that they built the city on, or there's some sort of toxic waste like the Simpsons thing going on. I don't know what their deal is, but all I know is they don't care that people don't like them, and they're proud of their behavior. So I say God bless them. There's some really amazing people, though, out of Philly, right? Hey, if you had to eat Wilkness, horse shit. It, uh, the Roots. That's Jill, not a person. Jill Scott. That's a band. Um, all the black people. <laughs> I know. You're like really racist, huh? Kevin Hart. Keith He's Robinson. Kevin, Kevin Hart. Yeah. I didn't know that. He oh, sold out oh, the Eagles right. Stadium. Yeah. And he was. <laughs> he's, he did stand up in a Kevin fucking football so stadium. so funny. He was so happy after they won. You saw him on TV drunk. <laughs> No, that sounded hilarious. It was, it was pretty great. It was pretty great. He was very happy. Yeah, so that's the deal. What am I going to get mad? You know, my team can't win it every year, right? Right. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're very gracious about it. You like that's the one thing you've actually mellowed out about as the years have gone by. I mean, backhanded you. compliment. Is your Go ahead. Sports. That's the so. one thing I could actually say I see improvement on. <laughs> the rest of it is taking a fucking nosedive. <laughs> No, you're very gracious when it comes to other teams. You're yeah, like, I don't. I don't take it to the point of like, like I said. I just, you know, what's his? I I retweeted that that uh, Nick Foles audio in the uh, in the in the in the huddle. It was great. Other than he said, "I love you guys," I'm just like, Ugh, why does everything have to be so fucking sweet now? <laughs> I would love to teleport I Nick. I would have, your response is, ugh. In a huddle in an NFL game, I mean, I would have loved to have, have teleported him back to that fucking 1980 Super Bowl team when they were playing the Raiders and just be like, okay, before we do this first play, I just want to say I love you guys, right? And just have Wait, Will, people, Wilbur Montgomery look at him. cry when they win the Super Bowl and stuff. You can't say I love you to not when I was a, Not when I was a kid, they didn't. They didn't. You don't think anybody actually had emotions when you were a kid that all of a sudden it's a new millennial thing to have emotions and express them? Men did not cry when I was a kid that I saw. 
I saw the Celtics win three championships. I saw the Lakers win five. I saw the Pistons win two. You know? Mm-hmm. The first time I think I saw a, a guy cry was Jordan. It was because his dad died and he wasn't there. And that was understandable. You know what I mean? But he didn't just cry because he won. He used to have that angry look on his face going like, we're fucking five, fucking six. And he always seemed to win it on the road. And you know he's looking at some little kid who was crying. He got off on it. <laughs> he got off on being mean. That's what a man was back then. <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, I just want to say I, I love you guys. <laughs> I want to just take time to just, everybody knows how much weight our offensive line has lost. You guys, you know, you were really, you know. I dare you. Coming out of your football pants at the beginning of the year, and now you're just looking so shapely. I dare you. And your next show, What's at that? the end of the show, when you say goodnight, I dare you to say, love you guys, goodnight. I dare you to say it. Are you kidding me? I would fucking do that for 10 minutes until everybody <laughs> just got so uncomfortable and left. Do it. Huh? I want you to do it. I the show's over, but uh, I just want to take some time to just speak from the heart. You know, my life no, has changed to, a lot in the last be. year and, and in a great way. I became a father and I look at the world a different time, different That's way. And I've noticed the whole thing. You can just be like, all right, good night. No, it has Come to be a big you. thing because then they're going to expect that there's going to be this punchline that never comes. Right. And it's just you going on and on about how much love you have in your heart. And don't forget to look at this. Don't forget to look at the sky today, everybody. You know, it's those little things that we take for granted. If you get some of that fucking pomegranate on my jacket. Oh, all right. Using my jacket as a table. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, the second this podcast is over, we're going to do a dry run with your little fucking booty shorts on. <laughs> just to make sure we're in, we're in sync. A dry run? Oh, oh, oh. Was that within sync? No, that, what? Oh, it was uh, the new kids. Yeah. I almost said the right boys. <laughs> Never keep those. Don't you dare oh, oh, oh. Joseph McIntyre mm, mm, like that. Mm, mm. The right stuff. You got the right stuff. That's right. Baby. Okay. Well, I think that Love might. the way you turn me on. Sorry. I thought you were going to keep going. <laughs> um, <All that>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you were of that age. Those boy bands, they, they caught you, right? Mm-hmm. Mr. Telephone. Yes. Man. New edition. And then, you know, the white new edition, also known as New Kids on the Block. And uh, Wait a minute, yeah. wait a minute. What are you talking about? The Osmonds came before new edition. What? No. You, <sighs> new edition had the same manager, okay, as New Kids on the Block. And their manager, Maurice Starr, said he wanted to make a white pop crossover version of New Edition. Well, then don't get mad. Don't get mad at white people. That was a black guy's idea. Who said I'm mad at white people? You were doing that fucking Elvis shit. New Kids on the Block have always given props and respect to New Edition their whole entire careers. That's good because I would hate to know that those two bands are fighting. I'm just saying it's, it's a nice thing. All right. Well, you have a f- new edition got screwed. They really, really did, big time. So it's just nice that New Kids on the Block has always given them their their props. Okay, and wh- I don't why, why it get all weird. All I'm, of a sudden, I'm it, not weird. It feels weird. Well, that's because you live in a place of fucking awkwardness and anger. Can I ask so you a question? Dear? I don't really know <laughs> what to tell you about. Can that. I ask you a question? <laughs> yes. Sincerely, is it ever you? Is it always me in my world of awkwardness and anger and, 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 and negativity, as you say? Mm-hmm. Fucking unbelievable. If you yes, guys, of course. Oh, Jesus it's Christ. me. I woke up this morning. Ba-do-ba-do-do. I fucking <laughs> changed my daughter's diaper, right? But hanging out with her. I'm watching cartoons. This is all the great shit that I've done today. And this is what all, she, all she talks about. All she just just dials into is my is my fucking anger right i haven't even lost my shit yet today except when i burned my hand in the kitchen which is not why i yelled fuck i was why because i was putting the fucking quinoa into my thermos and you know and it always falls down in between the the, the, the stupid so you the burners and you said that's why you're screaming obscenities yeah, because I, I before it, it fell off the spoon and it went all the way down. You had to clean it up, and I just went fuck. And you in the other room, you're like, what? I was like, I burned my hand. <laughs> no, you're a sweetheart because you've just given me a bunch of compliments, and I love you, and you're fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that really doesn't hold any water. 
You've been trashing me. But you've been the last three times you've been on the podcast. You make it sound like you're emotionally held captive here when you're running the deal. Yeah, listen to that laugh. That is the laugh of somebody that's running a fucking relationship. All right, that's the podcast for this happy week. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Um, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Uh, Should today just be our anniversary? <laughs> All right. Why can't we just say the seventh? I'll remember that. Well, what day is today? Well, it's the eighth. Oh, so it was yesterday. What kind of life are you leading that you don't even know what fucking day it is? You have the nerve to talk about me. What month is it? Quick, quick. Anywhere. There you go. It's your history month. Shouldn't you be like lighting a candle every day? <laughs> don't they make a giant black menorah with 28 candles? A giant black menorah. Yeah. No, I, uh, no. And on this day in 1932. No, I'm reading stories to Lola every day about African-Americans. African-Americans invented the shoelace, which was later (laughs) taken, (laughs) credit was taken by the white man. (laughs) But actually, it was three women who were good at math of African descent. February 9th. (laughs) The first steamship was actually built by a Native American with African blood. Robert Fulton killed that person and said, I invented the steamship. This happened February 9th, 1845. <laughs> Is that it? February 9th, All right, 1804. All right. okay. Thomas Jefferson <laughs> finally gave in to his desires. <laughs> Um, Hopefully it was her desire too, but you... that's not how it worked back then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Wh- where are you performing next? Mm-hmm. Um, At the Patrice O'Neill Benefit? Or Patrice you? O'Neill Benefit, is, there's, there's uh, 54 tickets left, uh, something like that. Um, that's on February 20th. My next one is going to be in Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara, which was actually oh, named, an African American yeah. named it in 1972. Mm-hmm. I White people go. took it over because they liked the view of the beach. Are you uh, are you flying to Santa Barbara? Have you decided? Yes, I am. I'm flying flying a helicopter out there. Are you? Which will you're blow flying me. there and then flying back. So can I come? There's no room for you. What do you mean? There's no. <laughs> there's no room. There's no room. You and the co-pilot and the opener. Yep. Oh. Okay. Well, I guess that's that then. No two openers. Two open ups. Yes, we're flying out there. One of them is Verzi, and I'm going to be fucking dying laughing because he hates to fly, and it's going to freak him out that I'm on controls, even though we're going to have the co-pilot there. He's going to be freaking. Well, tell whoever the other person is that's coming with you to film him. Oh, yeah. When we first go into Hover, because, you know, the first time you go into Hover, that's one of the weirdest feelings ever. Yeah. Other than realizing that you're attracted to me 15 <laughs> years ago, 14 <laughs> years ago. That must have been. Am I attracted to that orange-headed weirdo? That's um, kind of who's what I thought. so negative? Well, that's nice, Nia. No, I that's didn't. a nice no, thought. No, no, no. no and no, you no. wonder why like I that. live in a world of anger and <laughs> awkwardness? No, no. The, when I first saw you, the I first thought, time ever I, I saw you really, your freckles, really, really handsome, and I was like, oh, what were you like? Oh, Ooh. that's that's when I but always then know. We didn't get together until like five years later, so. It was meant to be. Oh, you like me? I saw. I met. I met my wife in an alley behind the first <laughs> in an alley behind the Apollo. Yeah, that's the first. I was going like in, in to the do stage area. Yeah, yeah, I was going in to do that's Showtime at the first. Apollo. My dad had booked you on at Showtime at the Apollo. My dad used to book the comedians on at Showtime at the Apollo. My dad has actually known Bill longer than I have, and um, I saw he was like, "Oh, I got this funny white boy from Boston." On the show, and I was like, oh, "Okay, cool." I just graduated from college, and I went back there and you said hi briefly, and I was like, "Oh, huh, he's really good looking." And then when I saw you years later on Tough Crowd, I immediately recognized you. I was like, "Oh my god, that's the guy that I met at the Apollo with my dad." Yeah, and then you were such a jerk to me. I wasn't. I, you, I kept trying to I ask understand. you out. You were such an asshole. No, no, that's not how it went at all. I was you wouldn't even look at me. You. you were in the elevator. I was, I was looking over. I was like, think of something to say, something with something to say. And you were staring straight ahead like those fucking guys in London with the big furry hats. <laughs> Expressionless. I was probably trying to play hard to get. But you also had a girlfriend at the time, and I had a boyfriend. No, I didn't. 
Yeah, you, you did. You thought I did. No, you did. And then when we ran into each other at the party for Chappelle's show, that's when you told me you didn't have a girlfriend. But when we first met, you did have yeah, a girlfriend. Yeah, but I didn't fucking ask you out when I had a girlfriend. I know. I know well, then that. I'll write then. I know. But, but you were still looking. So what? I can look. <laughs> I was looking too, even though I had a boyfriend. But we didn't do anything until after we were both Until after. Exactly. Yeah. Jesus, I thought you were going to go all Quincy Jones there. <laughs> oh, listen. When you fucking Die. kick the bucket. When you kick the bucket. You I'm wait till this, all, all the beads. Secrets. I would never do that to you. But I do. I don't, why would I myself, give a shit? I, I'd be dead. I do imagine myself. No, I don't want to. First of all, I don't ever want to think about you dying before me. That would be too much. Well, it's going to happen. I'm 10 years older than you, and I'm a guy. But I do take better care of myself than you do. Wait, what? I do. I do the elliptical. I swear to God, you eat quinoa for three weeks and you think you're some fucking like health guru. <laughs> like you really need to knock it off. <laughs> Fair enough. You're like, oh wow, I just ate quinoa and I have so much energy. Yes, Bill. We are all aware of like the health benefits of you're quinoa. You're jealous of my new healthy diet. I'm not jealous. Yes, you are. You're always nosing around like a little fucking rabbit with your nose wiggling. Like, what are you eating over there? What are you eating over there? I'm just, yeah, I'm curious what you're doing because, yeah, you're, you're doing really well with your diet and stuff, but I just you think that you like, were the first person that discovered quinoa, the way you go on and That's on about it. That's not what I think. What do you think? I think I went to the dentist yesterday and mm-hmm. found out that I was supposed to do 16 weeks of Invisalign, but because I've left these things in, sometimes even during shows, spitting on the front two fucking rows because <laughs> I want to get this over with. He says it's only going to be 13 weeks. And I just put in tray number nine, bitch. <laughs> I got another month of these fucking things. That's it. Yeah. You just you know how excited I was when I got. Remember when I got. Remember when I got your teeth fixed. All this shit that I've done for you. Please don't put it that way. All this okay. shit that I've done when for you. you. But if I see one more fixed, fucking like, piece of clothing that you just had to have, that you just, just frisbee down at a fucking Goodwill for some homeless guy to traipse around in while he's looking to get his fucking junk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got to get off. I have to get on, on with my fucking day here. This has been the podcast. We're going to now play a little bit of music, and then you're going to listen to another half hour of bullshit from a Thursday podcast uh, earlier this year, 10 years ago, I don't know how it works. CBD. Um, that's it. All right. Have a wonderful weekend, you cunts. And once again, congratulations to everybody in Philly. Uh, please don't eat excrement from an animal. <laughs>